Okay, let's take a look at some trig derivatives here. On the side, I have our six trig derivatives. Uh, notice that uh, derivative of cosine is negative sine, cotangent is negative cosecant, and derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant x cotangent x. So notice the derivative of all your c functions is negative. This a little tip from me to you. So here we're just taking the straight derivative of sine minus tan with a little two in front. The two doesn't really affect the derivative. So it's really just derivative of sine is cosine, derivative of tan is secant squared x. Here we have a product, a product of x times cosecant x. So we're using the product rule that I've written right above here. The first derivative of the first times the second plus the first times derivative of the second. So we have f prime of x, derivative of x is one times the second function plus the first times the derivative of the second, which is negative cosecant x cotangent x. So I'm just going to make this negative up front and do 1 times cosecant x. So f prime of x is cosecant x minus x cosecant x cotangent x. I'm going to factor out a cosecant. Hopefully something nice happens, though I don't think it does. And there's no nice um, identity with that, so we're just going to leave that one be. Here we have a product again, so we're using the product rule again of sine times cosine. So the derivative of the first is cosine times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second, which is negative sine x. I'll multiply those two and those two. So I get cosine squared x minus sine squared x. That's an acceptable answer. Small probability that this answer could be cosine 2x, because cosine squared minus sine squared is one of those trig identities. Double angle cosine is equal to that. Probability of that showing up in the AP exam is slim to none, but I thought I'd share it with you anyways. Here we have another product. We have cosecant times 1 plus secant, so we'll be using the product rule again. So we have f prime of x, derivative of the first is negative sine x times 1 plus secant x plus the first times the derivative of the second, well, derivative of one is zero, and derivative of secant is secant tan. So secant x, tan x. I'm now gonna multiply these three. Well, conveniently, cos times secant is one, so I'm just left with tan, and I'm gonna distribute this negative sine. So I get f prime of x is equal to negative sine x minus sine x secant x plus tan x. I'm going to change this into sines and cosines, and this into sine and cosine. So I get f prime of x is equal to negative sine x minus sine x times 1 over cosine x. Oops, that's a plus. Sine x over cosine x. Well, notice these two are opposites of each other, so they cancel. And we're just left with negative sine. Conversely, since it's such a very nice answer for a lot of work, what if we handled this a different way? Rewrite the original function. Oops, that's secant x. I'm going to distribute this cosine. So I get f of x equals cosine of x plus, well, cosine times secant is 1. So here's my function. If I take the derivative of that, derivative of cosine is negative sine x. Derivative of 1 is 0. So there's the same answer using two different methods. Here we have a product, excuse me, a quotient. So I've written the quotient rule off to the side over here, low d high minus high d low, all over low squared. So our derivative is low derivative of high, which is negative sine x, minus high, which is cosine of x, times the derivative of low, which is secant squared x, all over the denominator squared. I'm going to put this negative up front, so we get dy dx. And at the same time, I'm going to change everything into sines and cosines. So I get negative sine x over cosine x, times sine x minus cosine of x times 1 over 
cosecant, excuse me, cosine squared all over sine squared x over cosine squared x. So I simplify a little bit here just by multiplying the sines and cosines. I get negative sine squared x over cosine x minus, I'm going to cancel this cos with one of those coses, so I get 1 over cos x all over sine squared x over cosine squared x. And now I'm going to multiply this whole numerator and this whole denominator by the common denominator. There's cosines everywhere, but there's two cosines in the denominator of our denominator. So therefore, I'm going to multiply the top by cosine squared and the bottom by cosine squared. So this gets multiplied by that. This gets multiplied by that, and likewise. So here, um, one of our cosines cancel one of our cosine squareds, one of our cosines canceled, so I'm just left with, so I'm going to squeeze it up over here. I'm going to get negative sine squared x, cosine x, cosine times, cosine squared times one over cosine is uh, just cosine, so I'm just left with the cosine of x. All over the cosine squareds cancel, so I'm just left with sine squared x. The numerator I can factor out a cosine of x, negative cosine of x, so negative cosine x, sine squared x plus 1 over sine squared x. You would think that you could simplify this, but there is no trig identity with sine squared x plus 1. It's 1 minus sine squared x, so therefore I can't change this. This is a pretty ugly answer, so let's just leave it. I did the best I could. Here we have another quotient, uh, except it's uh, 1 plus cosine as opposed to just sine and cosine. So we'll be using the quotient rule again. So we have low, which is 1 plus cosine of x, times the derivative of high, which is cosine of x, minus high, times the derivative of low. Well, it's just 0 minus sine squared. Excuse me, 0 minus sine of x all over 1 plus cosine of x quantity squared. I'm going to distribute this cosine. So I get the cosine of x plus the cosine of squared x. Negative times a negative is a positive, so I get sine squared x all over 1 plus cosine of x quantity squared. Hopefully you all see that this is the Pythagorean identity, which is equal to 1. So I'm left with cosine of x plus 1 all over 1 plus cosine of x quantity squared. This is the same as this, except there's two of them down here, so we're just left with 1, so I'm just going to cross out the exponent. So we get the derivative is equal to 1 over 1 plus cosine of x. Our last example is just a notational thing. We want to find the fourth derivative of sine. And that's what this notation says right here. Take the derivative four times with respect to x of sine. So I'm just going to let y equal the sine of x just for notation-wise. So our first derivative is just written dy dx. The derivative of sine is cosine. Our second derivative, you square the d and then square the x. You're taking the derivative twice, derivative twice, with respect to x twice. Derivative of cosine is negative sine x, so you're just taking the derivative of the derivative. So here we're taking the third derivative of our function with respect to x again. Derivative of negative sine is negative cosine of x. And our fourth derivative of our function with respect to x is equal to, well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so it's negative, negative sine x. These two negatives cancel, and we're just left with the sine of x. So I notice that it's cyclic, that uh, we ended up back, by taking four derivatives, you get back to where you started from. So if we did eight times, same thing would happen.